Everyone, blessings to you. Blessings to you, everyone. Blessings to you. The book is out. Prophetic Mysteries Uncovered Completely. Over 200 pages of supernatural secrets from Jesus. Oh, saints, you want to get this book. Wherever you are, this book is powerful. It's powerful. I have secrets about Elijah and Moses and Jesus in the end times and how to overcome sexual sin, how to be free, how to see trances, how to see visions, how to move in meditation, God's way. It's full of supernatural mysteries. It'll really bless you. Prophetic mysteries uncovered completely. Then I have wisdom statements in the front that is so powerful. I love this book. This is my first book I ever created in book form. It yeah, really bless you. Make sure you follow me on Periscope and all over. Twitter. Get on Twitter.
we give you our all, yes, all to you. Saints, I'm telling you. <laughs> Saints, the power of God is so strong today. I'm going to be teaching you about something powerful on here. If you, if you on this line, I want you to share this and invite your followers. Because there's something amazing that Jesus is doing in my ministry. And I want all of you all to start experiencing this. It's mighty. It's real mighty. Share this broadcast. Invite your followers. Thank you. 
when I was in California. Been kind of busy, but we were working on this. I belong to you. I belong to you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You are welcome. Come flood this place and fill me. Abba, I belong to you, I belong to you, oh, I belong to you, Abba, I belong to you. I'm standing on. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You're more real than the wind in my lungs. Oh, oh, oh. Your thoughts define me. Oh, you're inside of me. You are my reality. Oh yes, yes. Oh yes, yes. Oh yes, yes. Abba, I belong to you. I belong. Saints, that's Johnny in the background. I love Johnny. You're a good father. And that's uh, his lovely wife, Whitney. They're You're awesome. Good They'll be with me in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh. Messiah, Messiah. 
Saints, I just freestyled this stuff. It wasn't written. We love you. We love you. Ah, 
body receive healing in your body say Jesus take me over Jesus possess me the presence of God Jesus to you blessings to you blessings to you hey i want to talk to you about something powerful but but say this say jesus i receive your presence because the presence of god is real strong right now because when you uh when you invite him he comes there's healing taking place on this line right now your physical body when it comes into the atmosphere of jesus it can't help but become whole he can't help but become whole. And there's healing taking place right now. There's some of you on here, you're receiving the presence of God. I'm about to minister, but I want you to just take this time to just receive. Just receive the fullness of God's presence. Receive his presence. Because the power of God is here right now. In the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare healing in your body. I decree and I declare healing in your body. I decree and I declare healing in your body. The healing power of Jesus goes through you. The healing power of Jesus goes through you. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, it goes through you. The anointing of healing goes through your body right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, Jesus possess me. Jesus possess me. Say, Jesus possess me. Calling you, he's calling you to a whole new level. His angels, seraphims, cherubims, oh, the holy of holies, all. Oh, 
calling you, all of you, up, up and away, up and away, oh, he's lifting you higher, higher, higher. Up, up and away, up and away, oh, he's lifting you higher, he's lifting you higher, he's heaven on earth, heaven on earth, heaven on earth. Saints, listen, this thing that you're going through is coming to an end. It is finished. It is finished. It is over. It is over. Up, up and away. Up, up and away He's lifting you higher Heaven on earth Heaven on earth Heaven on earth Just say, Jesus, I receive your presence and power Watch, as you're saying this, you're going to feel a surge of God entering inside of you. Say, Jesus, I receive your presence and power. You're going to feel a surge of the Holy Ghost going through your body, your soul, and your spirit. Say it, saints. Jesus, I receive us. I receive your presence and your power. I receive the manifestation of your presence. He's lifting you higher. Up, up and away, up and away, up and away, oh, it's heaven on earth, heaven on earth, heaven on earth, heaven on earth. telling you, tell the Lord in 2018 to take you over. Tell King Jesus to take you over all your decisions, everything that you do, everything you say, possess me. Being possessed by the Holy Spirit. When people are demon possessed, they find themselves saying and doing stuff even when it's out of their control. Imagine when Jesus possess you. You can heal the sick and you don't even mean it. <laughs> you just can be walking and your shadow could heal the sick. You can be a light to people and you don't even know it. Because when you possess by him, it's just automatic. It's just automatic. It's just automatic. And saints, I pray and I decree over you that that will be your testimony everywhere you go. Don't think that if you're working at a workplace that you're out of the will of God. Jesus got you there. You say, oh, well, people keep fighting me. Everybody not here saved. That's why he got you there. A lot of times you looking to serve God in an atmosphere where everybody else is serving God. 
the fact that people are not serving God, that's the reason why Jesus will plant you there. Because you, you are the only Jesus that they'll get to know. And yeah, they'll attack you. But you'd rather be a bridge for the sake of Jesus where people step all over you. Saints, let me give you a secret. Jesus was speaking to me one day and this is what he said to me. He said, son, I said that the church was, was built upon the, the foundation of the apostle and the prophet. He said, son, that means that the apostle and the prophet your foundation. A foundation is underneath the building. He says, son, that means that people will walk on you. Don't get offended when people walk on you. Because remember, the church was found, it was built upon the apostle and the prophet. And you are the foundation, so they're going to walk on you. But you rather that happen and people have a chance to receive Jesus than you have all things go your way and nobody gets the opportunity. Saints, this is how I uh, this is how I was whole about situations in my life. Because when people walk on you, the awesome thing about it is that you still got the will of God done. That Jesus was able to reach out through you. You see that, saints? So you don't, you don't, you don't get mad and you don't get frustrated and don't, don't say, oh Jesus, I don't like this. No, no, no. Rejoice. Rejoice that the Lord counted you worthy to be a bridge for somebody to come to him. If they walked on you, that's fine. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. My voice been kind of, I'm a sing. <laughs> Father, forgive them. Oh, they know not what they do. That's why I'm hearing in the spirit. Father, forgive them. Oh, they know not what they do. We pray, Father, forgive them. Oh, they know not what they do. What's happening to you, Jesus? What's happening to you? All to you, oh. some uh, things on here I want to minister to you uh, about some powerful things since I've been preaching like a madman my voice tried to leave me and God said come on son let's tap into it 
<laughs> I want to deal with something real powerful here because, saints, you know, Jesus, uh, every day, he has a schedule for you. And he's scheduled for you to prosper. He's scheduled for you to increase. And he don't want you to settle uh, for a life of struggle when he got a whole kingdom of ease and rest. And like I've been telling you, saints, a lot of times I've heard people say, I'm leaving my workplace to serve God. And they don't know that at their workplace you're serving God. Well, you say, well, my boss is not saved. But you're doing it as unto the Lord. And, and, and what people must understand is wherever Jesus has you is ministry. If Jesus got you as a janitor, you're ministering. If Jesus has you as a teacher, you're ministering. If you are a bus driver, you're ministering. If you are a police, you're ministering. Wherever Jesus got you, you're ministering. If you are a wife, you're ministering. If you are a mother, you're ministering. If you are a father, you're ministering. Wherever Jesus got you, you're ministering. So what Satan can do, is have you leave where God got you ministering and say, I'm going to go minister to God. No, no, you lean into your own understanding. If Jesus got you there, you're ministering. I've heard single mothers say, what is the will of God for my life? Do you, do you understand that you got a spirit that God created in your hands? And he gave you dominion over that spirit to impart to that spirit what that spirit is going to believe in the future, what that spirit is going to operate in the future, how that spirit is going to perceive things in the future. That's an anointing. That's an assignment. The fact that you got the power like God to train up a child in the way that they should go, that is a ministry. That's a divine assignment. Um, let's go to Psalm one. Uh, let's go to Psalm chapter 72. Now this text is talking about Jesus in a lot of aspects. Uh, Psalm 72 verse two. Psalm 72 verse two. Look what it say. He shall judge the people of God with righteousness and the poor with judgment. Verse three, the mountains shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. Look at verse four. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy. He shall save the children of the needy. He shall break in pieces the oppressor. My God. Saints, this is Jesus here. Is, is describing Jesus. And see, David was so prophetic. He was such a seer that he stepped into Jesus' time and Jesus' assignment, and he knew what Jesus was going to release to the earth, what he was going to manifest. Look at this. The Bible said he was going to save the children of the needy, and he was going to break in pieces the oppressor. Saints, let me give you a secret. Jesus is responsible for breaking in pieces the oppressor. Remember, uh, uh, Apostolic mentorship. Remember, I was talking about this. Remember, I was talking about this about breaking. Now you can add that scripture to your, to your, um, to your notes. Uh, Psalm seventy-two, verse four. That that that's a Jesus realm for breaking. He shall break in pieces the oppressor. Now, saints, you can be oppressed mentally, you can be oppressed physically with sickness, but you can be oppressed financially. Um, a lot of times, uh, financial oppression is not spoken about, but a lot of people are oppressed today because of their finances, because they know that there's a lot that they could do and they got a lot of vision, but they don't have a lot of provision. And what Jesus came to break the oppression off of you financially, because Satan loves to uh, suffocate you through substance. He shall break in pieces the oppressor. Let, let's go verse five. They shall fear 
thee as long as the sun and the moon endure throughout all generations. See, it said that we was going to fear Jesus. I fear him. I fear him. This prophecy came to pass in my life because I fear Jesus. I respect him. I'm, I, I honor him enough for him to be who he want to be around me. I don't, I don't judge him. I don't criticize him. I don't get offended. A lot of times, saints, you got to be careful that you don't get offended by what Jesus do. And a man of God is to reveal to you how God operates. A lot of times people fight men of God. A man of God tell you something, humble yourself. And don't try to fight that man of God. Don't try to criticize him and persecute him. Humble yourself. Your flesh would like to get involved and say, oh, now nah, I don't like this. You're going to have to shut your flesh down and, and, and shut down demonic forces that's going to try to get you offended how Jesus operates. Woman, man, you're going to have to learn that. When Jesus operating through a man of God, don't try to check them. Don't try to disrespect them. Humble yourself and be quiet. All right? <laughs> I'm talking real strong, but I'm just letting you know. Because in our generation, disrespect is so elevated. Dishonor is celebrated. People, people will celebrate you when you dishonor a man of God, but they'll, they'll persecute you when you honor a man of God. And when you're doing what a man of God tell you to do, then they start saying you underneath witchcraft, you underneath manipulation. But when you are uh, fighting men of God, they say, oh, you're doing awesome. Do it, do it. So, so you got to be careful of that. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's ungodly counsel. When a man of God telling you to do something, your man of God telling you to do something, humble yourself. They represent God. And how you respond to them is how you respond to God. Don't disrespect your man or God and then try to say, oh, I love you, Lord. The Lord going to say, how you love me? And I just came to you and you just questioned me. You just investigated me, huh? Whatever you do to a man of God, you're doing it to God. I've been around Dr. Mike Murdoch. I never went through his things. I never looked into his past. I never tried to uh, criticize him. I never questioned his decisions. I never accused him. I never said anything evil to him. And me and his relationship is so beautiful today because me as a young man, even though I had a prophetic anointing on me, I respected his authority in my life because I know Jesus sent him to me. So I knew he represented Jesus. Even though I represent Jesus, I knew he represented Jesus. So I respected the Jesus that he represented. And me and his relationship is so beautiful. So man of God, I'm telling you. Woman of God, I'm telling you. Uh, it's a beautiful thing when you submit yourself to your man of God. And I'm going to say something that mess some of y'all up. It's a beautiful thing when you surrender your life to your man of God. Because saints, a lot of people say, Lord, I surrender to you. Then God will send somebody and they say, no, nah, I'm going to surrender myself to God. And God say, how are you going to surrender to me when I'm showing you how I want my surrender? See, saints, we got to understand Jesus that he going to give you the order. And how he give you the order, do it that way. Don't serve him how you want to serve him. Give him the order the way that he want it. Huh? A lot of times people say, you know, I I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And God said, no, I'm telling you how I want it done. This, this is how I want it done. Do it like this. And they say, no, I'm going to do it like this because, no, no, no. Give Jesus his order the way that he ordered it. If he said he don't want no salt on the fries, don't give him salt on the fries and say, Lord, I just want to be a blessing to you. No, no, no. He told you what he wanted. Huh? If he sent a man of God to you, don't say, oh, Lord, I submit myself unto you. And, and then you disrespect your man of God. God said, no, no, no. I told you how I want my submission. Don't give me your submission how you want. Don't go on a 40 day fast and tell him, I'm submitting to you, oh, Lord. Nah, that's not how I wanted my submission. I wanted my submission by you listening to somebody that I sent to you. And as you as you submitted yourself unto them, you were submitting yourself unto me. It's apostolic. You'll be all right. I'm kind of cussing you out, but you'll be all right. I'm, I'm cussing you out because I, cause I love you. I, I just want you to get this thing right. I don't want you to have no false perception in your mind. There's a lot of people serving God out of witchcraft. 
meaning that Jesus done showed them how he wanted his service and they won't do it. But they're doing a million things other than what Jesus asked them for. And now they think that they're doing a service unto God and they're getting weary. And a lot of people today are weary. When you see religious people telling them that they get weary, they get weary because they ain't serving God the way that he asked to be served. They're serving him in the way that their intellect is telling them. They're serving him with a Martha spirit and they're getting weary. They get getting tired because God ain't asking for that. He telling you what he won't give it to him the way that he want it and then you'll be blessed. Then you'll enter into rest. Don't give God what he don't want. Give him what he want. Because what happened is you'll end up getting tired. You'll end up getting weary. You'll end up getting frustrated. You'll end up getting uh, uh, messed up in your mind and acting like it's Jesus doing it to you. And it's not Jesus doing it to you. You stepped out of the boundary. You stepped out of the instruction. You stepped out of the order of things. You stepped out of divine authority. Weariness is a penalty for avoiding submission. You take a note, write that down. Weariness is a penalty for avoiding submission. If you ever avoid submission, you're stepping to weariness. When you submit yourself unto God, that means that you stop fighting somebody that he sent to you. Let me give you a secret. Let me give you a secret. Huh? Huh? When you are submitting yourself unto God, you have to stop fighting somebody that he sent to you because God going to send somebody to you. See, saints, I want you to see this. Uh, a lot of times, we don't, really, we don't really have the anointing that we think we have. It's all in our heads sometimes. Let me shock you. Because when God sends somebody to you, they come to add grace to you. Why are they adding grace? That mean that there was a missing part of your puzzle. See, the children of Israel, they needed Moses, but they was acting like they was all right. But they wasn't all right. Me and you saw how they was acting all witchcrafty and rebellious and evil and childish and all jacked up. We saw how they was acting. Me and you saw it, but they couldn't see it. If you went to the children of Israel today, they would say, we anointed. God is with us. I'm a, I'm a prayer warrior. I'm a prophetess. They would have told you that. If you would have met them in our day and time, they would have told you, I went to school for seminary. I, I've been prophesying since I was uh, uh, one and a half. I've been saved since I was a little infant. That's how they'll talk to you. Because according to them, they had already knew what to do. So when Moses was telling them stuff, they were fighting Moses. Why you brought us out here? Can you imagine a man of God doing something in your life and you keep on questioning them? Why are you going here? What you doing this for? And God looking at you with the same anger that he looked at the children of Israel. I'm showing you saints, this is the path to live in your wealthy place. Huh? How you treat a man of God can make you rich. How you treat a man of God can bless you. What did God tell Abraham? I'm going to bless those that bless you. Wait, did God just pit people's financial future in the soil of Abraham? My God. He, ha, he, he just pit the soil, soil of Abraham, and he exalted it as the link to their financial prosperity. He said, I, I only bless those that bless you. But I'll curse those that curse you. If they put their mouth on you, I'm going to put their mouth on. I'm going I'm to I'm return what they said back on them. That's what God said. Huh? So God made Abraham his representative in the spirit. So everybody that was blessing Abraham in that generation, they stepped into the same blessing that Abraham was carrying. Everybody that treated Abraham with respect, God respected them. Saints, let me shock you. The, uh, the woman in Joshua's story, she was a harlot. Rahab didn't have no place with God, no righteousness with God. She lived a lawless life. Watch what happened. She received Prophet Joshua's men. 
She received them into her house and then she protects them. She even lies to the king so that God's plan will be protected. Watch what happened. Watch what happened. God said, because you did this, I'm going to bless you and your whole house. When I burn up this city, when I burn up this place, y'all going to get delivered from me burning up y'all place. I ain't going to touch y'all. Do you know where Rahab is today? She in heaven. And God told me she didn't get to heaven because she knew me. She got to heaven because she knew Joshua. My God. She didn't get to heaven because me and her were close. She got to heaven because when I came close with Joshua and his men, she responded to us with, with submission and with honor and the fear of the Lord. What did she tell them? I know the Lord going to give you all this land. So she was prophetic. But she had to receive the prophet and his people for her to receive a prophetic grace. What she got unlocked when they came, when she came in the presence of Joshua's men. Because they had the spirit of Joshua on them. They had the mantle of Joshua on them. They had the prophetic anointing of Joshua on them. So when they came into her presence, she was in the presence of prophets. And she began to prophesy like them. And she received the transference of the prophetic anointing. So look, look what happened. All of a sudden, she steps into her wealthy place because she received Prophet Joshua and his men. She covers them. You're supposed to cover your man of God. Saints, I can't respect people in our generation that try to uh, destroy ministry. I never respect them. I never respect them. I don't care if they do it in Africa. I'll never respect them. Because what happens is uh, real women and real men don't do that. If you a real man of God and a real woman of God, you, you wouldn't operate like that. If anything, you will spend your time praying. If you do believe that something is wrong with somebody, you'll spend your time praying. This woman, what she did, she was a prostitute in the natural, but she wasn't a prostitute in the spirit. She didn't betray her man of God. She kept prophet Joshua people and she hid them away. Now, why did I say you got to protect your man of God? Because according to natural people, they always believe that men of God are wrong. Uh, listen, there's nothing that natural people will ever say good about a man of God. They'll always find something wrong with a man of God. See, according to the law, Joshua and his men was wrong. But according to God, they was right. Saints, let me give you a secret. If you weighed out the law, It would say that Joshua and his men were breaking the law. They were unlawful. But according to the spirit, Jesus. Jesus was behind the whole scenario. Listen, when a man of God is operating in the spirit, if you a natural person, you're going to think it's sin. You're going to think it's evil. But you're going to have to tap into the spirit. Listen, let me give you a secret. Uh, I don't want nobody following my ministry if you don't pray in the Holy Ghost. I don't. Because you're not going to understand me. Huh? You're going to be like John the Baptist. I tell you to dip me in the Jordan uh, or dip me in the river. You're going to say, nah, I'm not worthy. I'm not supposed to do that. you you greater than now. You're not, I'm not supposed to do that. No, no, I need you to pray in the Holy Ghost. I need spirit-led people. I I'm placing a demand on you. I need spirit-led people around me. I don't need people in the flesh. I don't need people in their feelings and in their intellect and in their carnality. I need you to have your prayer language. You, you better start praying in the Holy Ghost ASAP immediately yesterday. Huh? Because we going somewhere that many have never gone Nobody has ever gone because Jesus always reserve a glory for a generation that ain't never been experienced before. Huh? You're going to have to get in your prayer language. If you're going to follow Elijah, you can't be praying in no English. 
Praying in English ain't going to get you nowhere. You go, you better, you better get some crazy tongues. Because every man of God that's in the glory, when a king is in the glory, he a madman in the spirit. He, he crazy in the spirit. Saints, I've, I've done some wild stuff in my life. I've done some wild stuff in my life. Saints, I remember when I was younger, I was on a plane. And while I was on the plane, I, I was reading the Bible. And there was a man next to me. He had, he had a whole bunch of ladies. Man, he had a whole busload of ladies, I promise you. On his laptop. He was looking and doing all type of stuff. And I, I, I ain't ministered to the man. I just was reading my Bible. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, you know, some of them had looked kind of, you know, it was all right. <laughs> he feels me. You know, I did look over there a couple of times just to see what was happening. But there, there, there was something in the room. All right? Now, you know, and, and so so I saw something going on there. You know, this is something that, that, that was kind of bigger than I, I was supposed to look at. It, it wasn't for me. So I just kept my eyes. I just kept my eyes back in my book. And I just Naji rumbled back into my my Bible. You see what I'm saying? I didn't worry about all that. You know what I'm saying? It was something, something that I, got, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't explain what's out of the world. Now, I'm reading my Bible. Minding my own yin yang. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't see no face. I saw something else. You know what I'm saying? So I got back into my Bible. And we're reading my yin yang. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. When I travel, I don't really eat a lot. For some reason, it, it always been like that. Like, because I'm more alert when I leave my zone. Because I dominate my zone. Where I live, I dominate. My, my, my environment, my mentality, uh, my city, my state, I dominate that. When you serve the Lord Jesus and you fear the Holy Ghost, you become a dominator. R principalities know me. I, I'm not worried when I'm in my zone. When, I, when I'm leaving my zone, I'm more alert. I'm even more alert. Because I know that I'm entering into other atmospheres and other principalities that govern over regions. So I'm more turned in my spirit. I'm more heightened. I'm more uh, sensitive. Now watch this. So I'm reading my Bible. And the guy next to me, he started talking to me. And he, he was, you know, he had the big old, you know, he had something on the screen that I can't tell you. It was kind of, you know. Now, huh? Now, when I looked over at, at him, he started asking me questions. He said, you read the Bible there? I said, yeah. And I began to feel like nausea hit my stomach. When, uh, those of y'all in deliverance, when you feel nausea, it's because deliverance is about to take place. God letting you know that anointing coming on you. When you feel your stomach bubbling, uh, meaning like you feel like, you know, uh, there's a feeling that you'll begin to feel. Uh, like a bubbling, like a bubbling over as if like you got butterflies or something. There's a phrase that they use. But when uh, I, I begin to talk to him, I begin to feel this. Huh? And when he shook, he went go shake, shake my hand. And when I shook his hand, I felt the feeling stronger. And then he took his hand out of my hand and just started talking to me. And then he said, I need to go to the restroom. He just interrupted me. I was, I was about to, I was talking to him about Jesus and stuff like that. And he just, he said, I need to use the restroom. And he said, I need to go. I, so I, I moved aside for him to go, you know. Did the matrix. And he came back and sat down and he was like real. So I was laughing in my spirit. I was like, I got him. We gonna go in for the knockout punch, cause we don't we don't we don't wear it him down. I know when I know when just like when you're a boxer, you know when somebody get into that state where they are weak. I saw it on his face that he was weak. So I I I I, I became obnoxious. I, I I've done some wild things in my life, and I started talking to him about Jesus and saints. That man he had on this uh. He had on this nice 
he had on nice clothes. And he started throwing up on his clothes right there in, 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 in front of the uh, in front of the uh, stewardess and everybody on the plane. And saints, it got louder and louder. And saints, the stewardess came over to me and she was like, is he OK? He was OK. I said, he OK. He's OK. He just he just ate something. Uh, and, 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 you know, it's, oh, he OK. And he couldn't talk. I was talking for him. <laughs> and saints. Ah! Ah! And the saints. I was wilding in that plane in my heart because I know what's happening. And saints, I, I just, I just, they gave him some napkins and gave him all type of stuff and all type of stuff. And, and, and I waited. You got to use the wisdom of the serpent. I didn't say nothing about Jesus. I just waited. I just waited. And watch, when he came, when he came out of it, all them spirits left him. No, I saw him leave. And when the demon spirits left him, this is why I knew. Now his house is swept clean. Let me give you a revelation. Remember what Jesus said, that demons, when they inside of that desert place, they, it said that uh, when the house is swept clean and empty, they say, let us return to our house. Let me give you a secret. When people get delivered, they don't receive Jesus. This is why deliverance ministry haven't been understood. If you get delivered from spirits, you're not saved. You just delivered from those spirits. Jesus hasn't come inside of you yet. This is why a lot of people, they don't understand when they go to a... Man, I feel the anointing in my hand. Do y'all feel that? Man, I feel like electricity going through my physical body right now. I feel the power of God. When... when um, Jesus... When, when somebody is delivered, their house is swept clean, but the house is empty. This is why a lot of people say, I got delivered from this, but they go right back. Because the spirit can re-enter them because Jesus hasn't come inside them yet. The person got to make a step and invite Jesus into their house. If they never get responsible and mature enough to uh, invite Jesus into their house, those evil spirits will come occupy them again. So they'll find themselves doing stuff. So, so when you do get delivered, you got to press into Jesus. If you don't, you, you open vacancy. And how many of you all know? You know, I've been to a lot of hotels in my life and, and uh, I flew on planes over a hundred times in my life. How many of you all know that if the room is vacant, you can occupy it? It don't matter who said that they was there before. If the room is available, you can occupy that room again. Huh? How many y'all catching me on here? How many y'all catching me on here? If the room is available, you can purchase that room again. Huh? Now, you probably left that room, but you can, uh, uh, you could occupy that room once again because the room is still available. So you can call back to that hotel and say, is that room available? Yeah, nobody has occupied it. Okay, I want that room. Watch. Now, because saints, I, I, I have done that. I've had nice rooms, and I love the room. And so I called them. I said, is the room still there? They said, yeah, nobody has occupied it yet. But the housekeeping has came, and they have cleaned the room. It's already. Watch. The room is swept clean. Jesus. Jesus. The room is swept clean. The housekeepers then came and swept it out. See, a man of God is a housekeeper. Jesus. So, so what a man of God is, he'll come and he'll, he'll clean your room. But that don't mean Jesus came. Wow. That's why you can follow somebody that's highly anointed and you can still be smoking. Because what happened is you, you haven't uh, received Jesus. That's your job. To receive our occupancy of the Holy Ghost. My God. 
Malabakaramando lobo kolobo. Reker, remaka, ramanda ramasia. Randa rabako, randa ramasia. What happened is, you have to make a transaction in the spirit with your words. Wow. You have to make a transaction. You have to say that you want Jesus. You have to say that you want the spirit of the Lord inside of you. It's not just going to happen because you got delivered. Because saints, there's so many people that got delivered, but they never received the Holy Spirit. Listen, let me shock you. This is why Apostle Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Because what Apostle, oh Jesus. What Peter was doing, I believe it was Peter that said that. What Peter was doing was they had received deliverance, meaning that the demons left them. But they never invited the Holy Ghost to take them over. That, saints, now you understand why I be praying prayers like that. That's why I tell you to pray the prayer, Jesus possess me. Now you understand. Huh? Now you understand why I taught you to pray prayers. And I told you to say, Jesus, take me over, hijack my body possess me. Now you understand why I tell you to pray prayers like that. Because what I'm telling you is I can deliver you. But the impartation of Jesus, Jesus not going to come and molest your rights. See, a lot of people don't know Jesus not going to rape your soul. If you're going to let him hit it, you're going to have to let him hit it by consent. Man, I I'm going to just be raw in here. There's something called consensual sex. It's not a rape. Consensual sex means that the person gave you the right to enter them. They gave you permission. Oh. You, there's something called consensual obedience, consensual uh, uh, salvation. There's something called consensual born again state, uh, consensual possession, uh, consensual worship. Ah, consent. Ah. Consensual uh, uh, redemption, meaning Jesus ain't forced. Huh? Huh? Because, saints, uh, at the end of the day, you're not going to say, hey, Jesus made me do this. No, nah, he's going to give you the right. Yeah, he's yeah, he going to give you the right. He's he going to give you a chance to say uh, whether you want it or not. What did he tell the man? Will thou be made whole? That was consensual healing. Wow. That was consensual healing. He said, will you be made whole? What he was saying, I can make you whole, but I ain't going to force you into wholeness. You're going to have to let me know. Are you okay? Huh? Or you still want this SSI check? You still want to walk with a cane? Huh? Huh? Because you ain't going to blame me because you ain't getting no check no more. Uh, you ain't gonna blame me because you ain't getting no check no more. All right, do you wanna come up out this thing here? Hmm? Or, or do you want to stay in this state of brokenness? Or do you wanna come out, uh, come out of this thing here? Saints, look what uh, Jesus said. Do you love me? To Peter three times. That was consensual love. Jesus was saying, I ain't going to force you to love me. Huh? I want you to love me, but I ain't going to force you. Do you love me? They said, do you? Do you? It was consensual love. Because Jesus was saying, listen, if you want to go back to your wife, if you want to go back to your life, you want to be back a fisherman, it's okay. I'm okay with that. I'm at peace. See, saints, Jesus don't force you to serve him. He was telling him, if you want to go back to where you was, I'll let you do that. 
That's your prerogative. If you, if you want to live as a fisherman in this average life, or, or do you want me to show you this supernatural life where I can put money in the fish mouth? Let me shock you. Jesus put money in the fish mouth because the fish mouth, the fish was where Peter used to work. The fish was where Peter used to function. The fish was how Peter used to operate. So Jesus put the money in his familiar place. Because Jesus was saying, hey, now you belong to me. You ain't got to fish to try to find provision. All you got to do is obey me. And I put the money in the same place where you used to be in common with. Jesus revealed, revealed the supernatural economy in a fish mouth to Peter. Now let me tell you something. If Jesus put money in the fish mouth, you think that you're a son of God, a daughter of God, and you don't got money in your mouth? A fish cannot talk like me and you. A fish don't got hands like me and you. A fish do not got uh, 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 the abilities and the privileges that me and you have. You think that Jesus ain't put money in your mouth and you a son and a daughter? Master Kule Velei Avua. Listen, when you a sower, you got to get a revelation that you are the fish with the money in its mouth. You got a mantle in your mouth. You oh, repe, oh, you got a mantle in your mouth. You you not you oh, you, ah, you 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 ah, you not just dealing with, with you just sowing. You you stepped into the place of a fish with money in your mouth. Watch, the money came to cancel Peter's debts. You got to understand that. You have money in your mouth to cancel your debt. God, God the Son put money in a fish mouth to cancel Peter's debt. Every soul must know this. That there's a supernatural economy in your mouth. To cancel every debt. My God. You, you got a supernatural mantle in your mouth to cancel every debt operator in your life. Wow. Wow. Look at this. Look at Psalm 72. Man, I'm so loaded. I, I'm going to meet you on uh, Periscope. Make sure you get the Periscope app. I'm going to meet you on Periscope. I'm so loaded. I'm so loaded. Uh... Get the Periscope app. I'm going to see you on Periscope. Look at this here. Look what it says here. This is Psalm chapter 72, verse 7. No, no. Let's go to Psalm 72, verse 6. It said that Jesus shall come down like rain upon the mown grass. Remember Psalm 23 said he make you lie down in green pastures. That's prosperity. What, what it just said, he shall come down like rain upon the mown grass. Meaning, you know, when that grass is all pretty, he going to come down like rain. Mean he going to even make it even more pretty, more beautiful. Saints, God will beautify you with prosperity. Let's go to verse six. As showers that waters the earth. Look at verse seven. You know, when, when, it, when he sends showers to water the earth, that means crops begin to grow. Trees begin to grow. That means that when he come down, is a time of harvest. It's a time of prosperity and abundance. Look, look at, look at what Deborah, Deborah Brown said. I sold into your ministry and another week. Last week, God pitted on my rebellious son to re re return home after six years of incarcerated, incarceration. 
you see Deborah Brown testimony she sold into my ministry and her, her son came back home look at verse 7 oh we praise God with you Deborah we praise God we praise God with you Deborah look at this Psalm 72 verse 7 say in his days shall the righteous flourish and the abundance of peace as long as the moon endures look what it say it say in his days shall the righteous flourish saints Jesus came for you to flourish in finances Flourish mean that you're unstoppable, you prosperous, you're successful, everything working for your good. Remember, he said, all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Remember, the Bible said that uh, all things work together. Psalm, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Look at Deborah's testimony. She said she didn't even recognize her son. Can we give Jesus a hand clap of praise for what he just did for her son? You got to understand, that's her, that's her baby boy. Her seed arrested her baby boy. Remember I told you that you're not just sowing for yourself, you're sowing for your children? Huh? Saints, and some of y'all watch me and you're not connected to my soul? What you waiting for? Meet me on, meet me on, uh, 